Hello, it's Mark here from GrimTreeGames.com, online game store and the blog. And we're going to do a game overview video for Side Quest. There we go, focus, there we go. Um, Side Quest is a 1 to 4 player co op dungeon crawler. Um, the game amounts to basically these cards, some cards off to the side here, and two dice. So it's nice and portable, stick it in your pocket, go for a wander, have a dungeon crawl. Awesome. So, in a nutshell, what we'll do is we're going to talk about how it plays, take you through a turn or two, and then let you know what, what I think. Um, you can make your own mind up as what you think, that's, that's, that's how it works. That's free will for you. So, um, the, so the layout. So what we've got here is we've got this. I've set this up ahead of time um, to make it a bit easier. So we've got two, two. There's two players, two heroes. These are hero cards. As you can see at the top, it tells you um, how many pieces of equipment and how many spells you can uh, have on your person, and you've got a little special action at the bottom. Same with that guy there. Now then, that's two of. Uh, potentially more. Let me find the cards. Why is nothing ever where I left it? Right, here we go. So, there's also a rogue, a druid, a cleric, a warrior, a mage, and a barbarian. So there's lots to choose from. Each one with their own little special, special ability. So that's a choice. A choice you have to make at the start of the game. You also get to choose your starting basic basic weapons. So there's those ones that are down on the table currently that you can see. Mason training wand, and there's some more here. So these are the basic ones. You're going to want better ones quite quickly. They've all got different damage and abilities. Well, get to that. Una Memento. Um, this is your health. This is quite nifty. Look, so as, as you lose health, you spin it around. Yeah, that's quite cool. Um, and this is the dungeon. So what we do, what you do is each one of these... One of these is a locked door, sorry. Um, you take the locked door, you take some more locations, you have two, and then have many place which scale, so more players have more locations. And that's where we're going to start fighting beasties. Um, and then at the top, we have a pre-constructed deck here that I've built for this particular dungeon. And then we have monster cards, Oh, loot cards. Uh, we're, the game comes with three possible scenarios. So there's easy, uh, medium, and rock hard. So we're going to start off on easy, and basically all this does is it tells you how to build the deck. So we've done this, we've done seven, focus, focus. We've done seven bad guys, and three pieces of loot, and at the bottom of that <laughs> Autofocus, why do you hurt me so? Um, and at the bottom of the deck we've put a key, basically. So that, that diagram is, is that deck there, that's what we've done. That's what we've done to try and... That's what we need to beat. If we do, if we beat that, then we go to... I'll get you, okay. If we beat the top one, we go to the next one. And then if we beat that, we go to the uh, big baddie at the bottom, this that big dragon. <clears throat> Nick's Fang is called. Now I've mastered the art of, art of autofocus. Right, cool. Um, so that's the setup. It's dead quick. It doesn't take long at all. Which is good for this kind of game when it's short and sweet. So how do we play? A game, is, a turn, has four phases, essentially. You have the refresh phase, where you fill the dungeon. The hero phase, where you can do what you need to do. Monster phase, they hit you back. And then the M phase. Okay, okay, so the refresh rate is dead simple. Each one of these locations is going to get a monster. Okay, so well, actually, first of all, we'll flip the locations where the heroes are because they know what's going on. So each location has some special rules. Hall of Valor, in this case. When you attack a monster or a boss, uh, you are both in the Hall of Valor, all your weapons deal additional one and actual six. So, like you say, so they've all got slightly different abilities. So I'll let it focus. If a monster dies this location, the hero here will perform a free loot action. So yeah, each one does something cool. So you need to look at that, bear that in mind. So, the refresh phase. We're going to take our dungeon deck that we've built and we're going to place the monsters. Or loot. 
as it is. Because remember, there's some loots, there's some loots were shuffled in there as well. Oh, look at that Phew, score! So, obviously, none of these are the key. The key for the dungeon is right at the bottom. So now, one of these will be a locked door because we know that we, when we built this deck, we put a locked door in here. So we need to explore and find the locked door. We need to get to the bottom of that deck and find the key. So, heroes go first, which is nice. So what we do is, well, we have a look at the actions we can take. Now let me refer to the page so I know I have them all. So actions are, so you get three actions, you can do three things. Um, they include, you can move. Straightforward, yeah. You can move, you can attack, so if you're in a location with a monster you can attack it. You can pick up, if you're in a location with an item, you can pick the item up. You can loot if you're in a location with nothing at all. Well, no monster, sorry. No monster, then you can try and loot it. You roll a dice, five or a six, you find something. You pick from the loot pile, find something nice. You can cast a spell if you have a spell to cast. Or you can trade if you're in the same space as a fellow player. Um, you can shuffle your items around. Also, it's important noting that you do, like I said at the start, you do have a max... Uh, uh, item count so if there's ever too much if you're holding too much you can't move you need to put drop something or maybe trade so you can move again that all makes sense yeah good stuff so as an example what we're going to do um oh, oh also i've got something all oh, when in one time a player needs the leader stick okay so for argument's sake we'll make this player the leader that's just so you know who the start player is each turn um, so, we'll start with this person, so they've got a mace, the mace says, if you can see, uh, 5 plus, you do two, 2 lots of damage, easy, yeah? And that's the range, so if that was a 1, it could do damage to there, or to there, but it's 0, so it's just here, so you're gonna, he's going to attack that rat swarm. Rat swarm has 1 heart, if it had more hearts, you scuppered. Um, actually, no, it's got 2 damage. To the light. If you had three damage, it'd be scuppered. You've got to do all the damage on the card in one hit. So early levels, if you have rubbish weapons, you need to start looting quickly and get the weapons that do much more damage. So um, five plus. I'm rubbish at all games like this. Now I have an option. So that there's a rule that I missed to begin with, which made the game very difficult. However, what you can do is when you're spending points. Um, you can decide to add additional points after the roll for any actions that you have left. Okay, so for example, I've rolled a three. I've only taken one action, so I have two actions left. So, that means take my additional two actions, um, add it to the three, and then I can get a five, which means I hit, but I can't do anything else. Yeah, the clever the clever thing about this is obviously is the more actions you spend, the less you have that ability. So I can say no, 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 no. I'll roll again because then I might get two attack. I might get two hits. Okay. Might decide. Um, I just want a surefire hit. I'm going to spend those points on that now, so I score the hit. So it's interesting. It gives you an interesting choice, and that's what these games are about, right? Interesting choices. Um. So, uh, what, what should I do? What should I do? Um, because I'm a, a big coward, I think I'm going to add the two, score the hit, and kill it. There we go. Job is good. So that, that's dead. This is good. Okay, super duper. Um, so then it would be. Um, so all action is gone. It'd be the warlock's turn. So the warlock has a, a wand. It's not too bad. Five plus and does damage. Um, so I could move to another square to try and attack, try and find that locked door. What's what I'm going to do? I, I'm going I'm to use an action to pick up group heal. Okay, so just pick it up. He's peasy. No, that's an action. Group heal. All heroes on the same locations, you recover two health on a six. Seems quite high, but remember, you've got the mighty boost. Yeah, you've got the mighty boost where you can um, up that. So let's put that in on, on his equipment. Super duper. And I've got two left, so I'm going to move to here. Reveal this location. It's the locked door, that's what we need. Okay, that's good. And for my last one, I'm going to... Ah, now you see, because I'm explaining how to play the game, I've really not paid attention whatsoever. 
And I haven't realised that if I roll a 5+, plus, I only do 1 there anyway, and I'm not going to kill that spider. So that was a silly, silly thing to do. Um, well, there you go. I've made a mistake. So I'll roll hypothetical. I've missed it. It doesn't matter. It's a silly thing. Right, now, monster's turn. So what happens with the monsters is we go from left to right, okay? And if they, if they can try and move a bit closer, they will do. Or, if they're already in a position to attack, they'll just straight forward attack. So if you can see on the monster card, I'll just show you. Um, they has... Sort of... Focus. Okay. So he has two little footprints, which means he can move two spaces. Okay. And he also he has a range at the bottom of zero. So he'd move two spaces to try and get to you and attack. If you look also there as well, when you've got... Um, webbing, you just have to spend an extra action point when moving out of the cave spider's location. Um, so that's consideration, but we're not doing that. We've moved into it foolishly. Um, so anyway, uh, it's the spider's ghost. We're going to try and get five plus. Oh, it missed. Go for us. Okay, super. So that's the monster phase as well. Not a monster out. End phase. So end phase is for certain cards do things at the end phase. None of those are in play. So so we're good. So refresh phase. So anything that doesn't have a monster down gets a monster or. a or something from oh a damsel jolly good gets uh, something from the dungeon now if this ever runs out so once we say once we've got the key once we've done this pile and we've got the key at the bottom um then we just keep getting from the monster pile so there's always gonna be monsters coming out okay so monsters out notice we didn't put a monster there because there's already one there and the monsters are out it's the hero phase so now We've got a new thing here, it's treated like a monster with regards to putting cars down, so no more cars don't come down here. And what this is, is every at the end of every turn, what's going to happen is this is going to drop into the lava, and you're going to need a 4 plus to rescue the damsel, okay? Um, if you don't do it on the third turn, uh, game over. Heroes cannot let damsels, or anybody for that matter, in distress, sink into lava. Oh, also... If a hero loses, or one hero loses all the health, it's game over as well. You all need to survive. So, what's going to happen is, the hunter, concerned about the damsel, will probably... Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, I think we'll probably hit, hit this monster first. Five plus. Yeah! Okay, so dead. Ooh. Uh, goblin archer. When the goblin archer dies, a uh, hero in the same location may loot for free. So let's get... A card from the loot pile. Oh, amazing. There you go. That's pretty good. That's a mini crossbow. Okay, now, you can only have one weapon equipped at once, and you can re-equip whenever you loot or trade or pick up and shuffle things around. So I think at this point, we shall equip that. Put the mace in our backpack. So if I've done that, killed him, that was, that was good stuff. Now, if I, I can move, and I can move freely. If he was still there and I tried to move, um, then he would get a free attack at minus one. So something to bear in mind if you're moving and there's creatures there. Um, ooh, the hunter actually got a special ability. He could move two spaces per move. We don't want to do that. We're just going to move over here. One. So our third action, we're going to try and rescue this damsel. Four plus. Rescued. Easy. Super that's that's all those actions done. Um the the warlock. Now let's have a think. Um we've got group here, we've got the wand. So I can move away from the spider, but it's gonna cost me an extra action point and um it might hit me. So let's just uh but you see I've I've done something silly there and I can't actually damage it, so I'm gonna have to move away. Um, and it's going to move as well. Uh, the warlock really is not having a good time. So what we'll do is is we're going to move away, which is going to cost two, because it's an extra one. The spider's going to try and hit me, minus one. Okay. So the spider missed as I moved away, and then I'll try and hit the zombie. So a five plus. Got my training wand. Oh, oh, disaster! Hit the camera and everything. What did I get? It was a miss anyway. Okay, so 
um, hero phase over, so monster phase, so let's work across. Nothing, nothing. Zombie, zombie gets 5 plus and the zombie's ability. Bad news for the wizard. Um, if it deals damage, that hero must discard a spell. Bad news. So roll a dice, 5 plus. And he missed, which is good. Uh, the cave spider. So the cave spider has to be in the same square because he's on a zero uh, for range and he can move too. So the spider's going to go over here to the armory and roll five and damage one. There we go. And then that's the end of the monster phase. Now the end phase. Now if the damsel was still in play, the damsel would. And it's a nifty system because there's like lines on the bottom of the card for as it goes down. So the damsel would go uh, down one, and then the next end phase down one, then third turn dead, and it's game over. So I mean, without playing to the end, I think you've pretty much seen every rule in action. And the only thing I didn't do, I suppose, was loot. So if we'd, if, we, if it had cleared a space, I could have rolled the dice, 5+, plus, which I failed, and 5+, plus, I could have got an extra loot card. And there's some pretty cool stuff if the focus plays ball. Um, so uh, elite weapons, so hit on a 2+, plus, fireballs that do a lot of damage, spell barriers so you can block off. Um, squares, awesome shields, uh, rerolls, casting. So there's lots of cool things. And it, again, interesting decisions and all because armor, for example, what's it gone? What's it gone? I've seen it, I've seen it. Armor, discard armor instead of taking damage. Um, but it, instead of taking all the damage, so do you use the armor when you take that one hit or do you wait until you get a three hit? Interesting, interesting decisions. Yeah, a big three damage. Some of the monsters have three wounds and can only be beat by things with three damage. I think there's a couple weapons in here, some spells that do it. So, it, it, you know, it pays to try and loot. Even if you've got the key, you can, you can escape. If you're on an easy level, it, in theory, it, it sometimes pays to just have just a loot a little bit more. So let's say we finish that, let's recap, so let's say we finish that and we get to the end of the dungeon and auto focus has been the bane of my life again um, let's say we get to the end of the dungeon uh, and then you do it again but if you notice, look, the next one has more monsters in the initial deck and has less loot and the last one has ten monsters but it also has three hearts so, what are these hearts you say? These are dungeon hearts and when they come out, I'm trying to find them. I've stashed them somewhere in a pile. So there you go. So these are dungeon hearts. So these dungeon hearts, um, basically, they come out as monsters, and you have to destroy them um, before you can actually kill the big bad guy. And there's yeah, there's three dungeon hearts, so they'll spawn in different places depending on which location they're dealt into, and you have to kill. Or defeat each one of these dungeon hearts before the the big baddie uh, can be killed. Which again, it's an interesting mechanic. So, so what do I think of the game? I like the game. I've played it a few times now. It's quick to play. There's always interesting decisions to make, and there's always there's always a challenge. And I think that's the key into it. Right? Interesting choices, especially in a co-op. If the, if there's always one obvious thing to do and you have four people playing the game and every person says yeah, that's probably the obvious thing to do there's no dialogue there's no um, there's no interesting choices if there's, if there's choices to be made then players between themselves have to decide and you know you can bounce it between yourselves trying to decide what's the best thing to do so Critical in a co-op game. <laughs> Interesting choices. Um, now, this is a purely personal thing, and it's not... Uh, everybody won't agree, but um, the art is kind of like a, like a comic book style, cartoony style. Um, I prefer sort of like a bit more hard fantasy, um, traditional art, but, you know, that's a really small nitpick 
of mine. It's a personal thing. I, I, I know people that have seen this art and think it's really good because it fits with their style. They like the, the comic book anime-ish style. So again, that's a personal preference of mine. Um, but uh, mechanic-wise, it's it's awesome. I think this is one of the games... I have a number of games that I, I always sort of... If I'm out anywhere... Um, uh, I go to the pub and there's a chance for a sneaky game. I'll st stuff them in my pocket, like oddball aeronauts, zombie dice, that kind of thing. This could potentially find its way into one of my um, core pockets <laughs> next time I'm out and about. Cause it's perfect. You don't need you don't need a lot of space. Plays quick. Um, scratches the dungeon crawler itch. So there we go. That's my that's what that's my impression, that's what I think, and that's how it plays. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was informative, and I will uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.